Okay guys, let's start. Now, today's lab is basically about solar cells. Since part of this uh, um, class is about energy, so we will talk about solar cells um, and of course um, the light sources even a little bit about nuclear energy. Okay, so um, first off, what we are going to find today is that there is a maximum power <coughs> given by a particular solar cell that kind of relates to, corresponds to a particular resistance. Okay, in other words, when you attach a solar cell to a circuit like this, so this is my solar cell. We used to have batteries, we used to have power supplies, all kinds of different things. We worked with uh, dynamos, AC, DC dynamos last time, right? different power supplies. Today we have a solar cell. Okay, now can anybody kind of tell me whether the solar cell is going to be AC or DC? Generally speaking. Any guesses? You would think DC. That's exactly right. Okay, what we have today is a DC solar cell. Okay. And if you look back, you will have two markings, a positive and a negative. Okay. So now, when we put the solar cell with a load, load can be a light. <coughs> In your calculator, that would be your calculator. You have solar power calculators, that would be your calculator. Okay. So in this case, of course, to make things easier for us, we will have a resistor attached. Okay. So, what is this? You're getting there. A meter, that's it. Perfect. So, what is this? Both. <coughs> so, what is it measure? Car. Yes. What is this? Voltage. Just to refresh. So, today what we are going to do is this. We are going to attach the, the um, solar cell, we are going to let it uh, shine um, by our light right there and then we are going to measure the current and the voltage across at different resistor values. Okay. I want to emphasize two things here. One is the open circuit voltage, the other is the short circuit current. Okay. Open circuit voltage and short circuit current. What does it mean? It means that in a circuit, if the load would have a zero resistance, okay, no resistance at all. Now, do we have loads like that? We wish. But unfortunately we don't. Every time that we do work, the load will have a finite resistance. Okay. So now the, the cool thing about having a zero resistance is that it would give you the highest current, but at the same time the voltage <coughs> drops across this will be zero. Okay. Now an example would be, you shouldn't do this, because that would damage the battery, but example would, of, of this would be, you know, a um, car battery, if you short the two ends of the car battery, that would be short circuit. You pass the car directly across the two terminals. And what do you usually see? Have anybody has done anything like this? This is not supposed to be done, okay? Because that will damage the battery. You are trading lots of car huge current and it sparks, <coughs> sparks. If you, if you take the two terminals and kind of 
do this, they do a spark. So that is where you have the maximum current because there's no resistance between the two wires. So when you run, for example, the radio in the car, you have a resistance because when the radio works, the current passes through the radio or the components through the radio, um, in the radio, and then basically that would give rise to a certain resistance, and the current is not high. Then the current that passes through that will be low. Of course, there, there are other regulators inside. A little bit more complex, but the point of the matter is that if you don't have any resistance, the current will be really high. And then that, the current, the voltage drop, drop across will be zero. Okay? So that's a short circuit current. We are going to set this up so that we have zero resistance. You're going to measure the short circuit current. The other extreme is open circuit voltage. Remember the two extremes. Short circuit, resistance is zero. Open circuit, it is infinity. The symbol for infinity is this. Right. Okay. Infinity. So in other words, if the resistance is infinitely high, it's very, very high, then your voltage across or the potential across this is going to be the highest possible potential you can get across this. Okay. Now an example would be no current at all. So in other words, if I were to kind of have a small circuit, for example, let's put something like this, a simple circuit. I have a power source and I just disconnect the power source. No connection. This is an open circuit. Okay. Now in this case, there's no current. Since if the voltage is not high enough, it cannot jump. The electrons will come, come, come all the way to this end. They just pile up. In other words, they will not move. And then you, if you were to measure the, the voltage across this, that would give you the highest <coughs> voltage across. Okay. So at this point, we are going to measure the voltage, and that is open circuit voltage. So how do we do this? We will increase this resistance to about 50 kilo ohms. Okay. So when we increase this resistance to about 50 kilo, kilo ohms, you will notice that the current that flows through the circuit goes to zero. So the current is going to be zero. Okay? So now, when you measure the voltage across from the voltmeter, you are reading the open circuit voltage. Now, in the lab manual, you will have a table, but you don't have designated places to write these things. So my advice to you is to write it on top of or at the bottom of the table. There are two cases that we are going to discuss. We have the light bulb right here and the solar cell right here. Okay? Case one is <coughs> The distance is 25 centimeters. Case 2, distance is 50 centimeters. So let's see, I here, and here, this is my distance. Okay. Now, when I change the resistance. What I do is this. When I change the resistance, I change it in a way that, let's say right at the, the beginning, I have a very high current. So I will have zero resistance. I'm going to set the box, set the resistance to zero. I'm going to get a current. <coughs> this is of course the short circuit current. Okay? I got 58 milliampers. I'm just guessing. 
Okay? Something close to that. This is what you are going to get. Something somewhere close to that. So 58 million. What you want to do for the next step is you are going to increase the resistance. Increase the resistance. So that, <coughs> so that you get a current about 10% drop. Now if I calculate 10% from this, this would be about 5 <coughs> million. So it's about 0 .0, 0 0.005, 5 percent of this, right? You will take it. So I subtract that 0 .005 from 0 0.58, and I get 0 0.053. Now what I want to do is I'm going to watch my ammeter, try to change my resistance so that I get 0 0.053. <coughs> okay. At every single time, all you do is you record the voltage and the current. This is what you do. You are not recording the resistance. You are changing it so that you get different currents and different voltages. That is the purpose of changing the resistance. And when you change it, you change it so that you drop the current. Start with zero resistance. Maximum current, and then gradually the current will drop. Correspondingly, your voltage will go up. Okay. On the third column, you will calculate power from voltage times current. That will give you what your power is. You are going to use Excel. Your experts are doing Excel. <coughs> you have done so many graphs, line graphs. Different types of graphs. So now what you're going to do is you're going to use Excel. You're going to plot. This is your Y. This is your X. Scatter plot. Power versus current. At this particular point, this is your short circuit current. That's why I, I, I put it there. Now, when you plot it, you will get a curve like this. And when you get the curve, you are going to read the maximum power at the very top of it. Max. Now we have a quantity called fill factor for solar cells. So the purpose of this is to find the fill factor of our solar cell given this circuit. So now we have the P max and then we will know open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. Okay? And then we will calculate the fill factor. Ideally the fill factor should be 1. That is where you get the maximum or the best performance for this particular solar cell. What does this mean by the way? What does this mean? Look at this. <coughs> Each of these cases are for different resistance values. Your points are for different resistance values. If you increase the resistance, you gradually increase the power you get. But let's look at it. If you keep increasing it, the power won't increase anymore. There is a maximum resistance, the power will be a maximum value. And beyond which, the power will drop. So in this kind of systems, what you need to do is you need to select what would be your resistance for this particular source. If you do not select it <coughs> properly, the resistance of the load, then what's going to happen is your maximum power you are going to extract from the solar cell is not going to be a good value. In other words, what's going to happen is you'll probably extract power somewhere here, power somewhere here, power somewhere here. In other words, you are not extracting everything from the solar cell. It's almost like you're driving the car in less efficient so for example, everybody knows if you are driving your car at 55 miles per hour, 
you get the most efficiency. In other words, you get the most mileage out of the car. When, the, when um, you know you, you get these numbers, most of the time, the manufacturer gives the highest mileage numbers when you are driving at 55 miles per hour. Now the funny part is if you go less than that, you won't get you know you won't get uh, the best mileage. If you go speedier, in other words, let's say you are driving at 65, you won't get the best mileage. Either right? the case, won't help you. I'm not saying you have to drive at 55 all the time. No, I try to at least because I want to get the most mileage out of my gas, especially these days. Right. So the point is that you got to be looking at how to maximize your efficiency. Same principle here. Different system, same principle. So the idea is you are trying to extract the most amount of you know, power out of the solar cell. Okay? So that's case one, case two. Two graphs, two tables, and you will stop recording the current and voltage when the resistance hit 1 kilo ohms. What is 1 kilo ohms in ohms? How many ohms is 1 kilo ohms? <coughs> just refreshing, I know you know, but just want to make sure that you follow. Now when you read the current and voltage, one thing I want to, be, I want to say is that the voltmeter you have is auto range. In other words, it will change according to what it measures. It will give you millivolts sometimes, and sometimes it will give you volts. When you have millivolts, you have to divide that by 1000 to get the volts. If you have volts, be careful, you just write the value as it is. Of course, it's volts. Same goes to the current. If you are reading milliampere, you divide that by 1000 to get the ampere. That's when you can multiply and get the power in watts. So be careful. Okay? So um, let's do this on a table and we will go from there. Where did I start last time? Oh, where did I do this last time? <coughs> 